Hey guys, it's Anthony here, Super Service. I just tried to do a live video, it wouldn't do it. I figure, heck, that would be uh, easier than trying to download it. Could just shoot a video. I got Don's truck here, 03. Uh, went ahead and pulled it in. Other excursions, gone. It's outside, got it all buttoned up. Got that number six injector, it was, uh, it was no big deal. It was a pin, it's done, good deal. Uh, Don's truck, we just got the cab up, uh, went ahead and power washed the hell out of everything, cleaned it all, everything's all mostly painted, we'll paint more when we yank the engine out, but 03, I made a video a while back, you can look back and see Don's compression test, uh, man, he's been waiting a while, everybody's been waiting, we got, we're, you know, we're, attention to detail takes time. It takes time, so. But uh, this truck is actually, it's got 186,000 miles on it, okay? There's a receipt that he showed from 179,000 miles. At 179,000 miles, uh, I guess 60 some odd hundred dollars, almost uh, $7,000 or something was spent on this engine studying it. And I don't know, I mean, I, I know there was, I, I don't know. It, it was studded actually at another shop here in town. Another shop that's got billboards and all kinds of stuff going on. They're, you know, they are the specialty shop whatever i don't have no billboards uh but i'm i get a lot of customers that say they wish they knew we were here uh they find out afterwards you know and they're like man i wish you were i wish we knew you were here so i was i don't know but i mean just a bunch of crap man i mean really you know i don't know i mean valve cover bolts were laying down on the bottom uh, but it has zero compression on cylinder number five. Uh, I've got a video of the compression test on this, and it's finally time. It's time for he's up. Uh, the tower was leaking. I power. I mean, I power washed the hell out of this. I don't know if you remember Don what it looked like, but I mean, it's it's freaking clean now. We still got the drop cloth down. We'll uh, try to. That's the first thing I do. Yank it. Get the cab up, get the power washer out, put the rain suit on, clean the hell out of it. Clean it. Get the frame done so I can put everything up, put the table up, start disassembling. Uh, tomorrow, I mean, it's not far. We'll probably have it bare block tomorrow. We'll, we'll know what the failure is, what happened. So, uh, but we, he's got another block back in the back. We're going to decide, uh, get this one apart and decide which block, which heads, which, you know, which parts. I mean, hopefully we don't have a lifter issue because this is a straight up 03. We can possibly have an uh, 03 camshaft with a late model high pressure pump with all the brackets, uh, oil rails, everything off of the 06 engine that's in the back. We're gonna have to do a custom tune, obviously. Maybe, maybe. I know excursions are real bad at it. You delete an excursion, you take the throttle plate off. You get a throttle plate off the excursion up there. Then, uh, it throws a light because of the throttle plate, but it won't throw a light because of uh, intake temp sensor, insufficient flow. It'll throw a light for throttle sensor, thr throttle position, or throttle plate. Freaking sucks. Uh, but we're, yeah, I just figure I'd make another video. What we got going on, he's already got a Power Max, so that'll be all good. Um, hell, what else we got here? Uh, we are going to be putting a new slave cylinder. Those of you guys that that pull the slave cylinder out of the transmission, this is manual transmission. I mean, I, I'm going to get some people on there saying, oh, you can reuse that. You're pulling it out wrong or you're doing whatever. Shut up. I don't care. Shut up. Uh, I've done a lot of them, and after the first three or four, that uh, it might work good now, but it seems like once you release the slave cylinder out of you, once you unseat it after it's been seated for who knows how freaking long, uh, that they just they don't last. So we just go right off the bat, put a new slave cylinder in it. It's not that bad. I think it's like 200 bucks or something like that, maybe 150 bucks. 
I don't know, it's not that expensive and it's not that hard to put on. You just put the entire assembly. No bleeding, no nothing. Boom, it's done. Quick and easy. Um, and, yeah, but we haven't. We've got the engine out back kind of disassembled. Uh, Don bought another 06 engine, so we're going to eliminate the Fickham bracket, but he's got an 03 Power Max. Now, my experience with 03 Power Maxes has been horrible. Uh, they, they, I don't know. I mean, they just, the unison ring, from what I've seen, it's, it just, I don't know. I mean, but hopefully this one's good. And uh, we, we shouldn't even crack it open. I don't even think we're going to have to crack it open. Just leave it. Because, I mean, I think it's got 5,000 miles on it. I mean, 5,000 miles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, shit, leave it alone, you know, uh, but, yep, it's going to be another total engine, especially now we've got our, uh, we've got our procedure down now for the back, for the third bay back there, so, hell yeah, it's time, let's, let's carry on, dust yourself off, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, let's move on, um, yeah, so, this will be an update, uh, updated, complete update. And with it being an 03, straight up 03, it probably has got a 90 millimeter coolant pump, but that's okay because he's got an 06 engine out back. And front cover looks to be in okay shape for the one out back, so that'll be fine. Uh, we're going to possibly, I don't know if we're going to check these manifolds and see how the cone flange looks. We can surface the manifolds and surface everything. We'll pick the best two. The best manifolds between the two engines and go with those um, possibly use the engine harness that is on that one back there or you know you can't go wrong replacing it but it's I mean it's a hefty tag it's about 600 bucks to replace the engine harness so I don't know you know we're gonna go ahead and yank this tower we might just replace we'll replace a grommet uh, and reseal that tower up because it was it was nasty I mean Granted, I power washed the hell out of it. It was not that clean at all. Well, you can kind of see down in there. You can kind of see all the grime. I missed a couple of spots. It was leaking. I just wanted to clean it. Clean it up. Uh, let's see. Whatever else. I don't know. It's got freaking 03 intake on it. All 03 crap. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, exhaust, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I I was just now reading and I saw some comments on the exhaust. One internet ninja trying to talk smack on uh, cutting this exhaust in half. Well, look, you can see by tightening that bolt how much it bowed in. Good luck getting that apart. Good freaking luck. And then even with it, look, it was leaking exhaust. It was leaking. So. Hell yeah, I'm going to cut that damn thing. You're freaking out of your damn mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this. We're going to weld this shut. We're going to weld this shut, and I'm probably going to cut it right here. And then put a put a 4-inch steel band clamp around it. And then if he wants afterwards, uh, we can weld it up afterwards. But I'll actually take the downpipe outside and weld it. Uh, you know... I mean, I've got, I've got my, I've got a welder that, uh, he's a good welder. He can, he could, he could TIG it and fix it, make it all nice and neat. But you know, I mean, you tell me this exhaust, yeah, it's just surface rust, but yeah, I don't know, you know, stainless isn't supposed to rust, right? All that exhaust that, uh, I mean, you spend big money on exhaust and, and it, I mean, it doesn't stay. It's freaking exhaust. Give me a freaking break. Use, I mean, anodized pipe is just fine for exhaust. It's freaking exhaust. The stock exhaust, we never have issues with stock exhaust rusting out. I can't tell you how many aftermarket exhausts I've seen that have holes rusted in the bottom of it. Holes in it from aftermarket exhaust. So, you know, I mean... 
the stuff isn't solid gold. It's not the best thing since sliced bread. It ain't all that freaking good. So it's freaking exhaust. Anodized pipe would be just fine. So what freaking difference does it make to cut the damn thing and weld it back? Plus, I like to get rid of the freaking clamps, you know, possibly even weld a hanger. I mean, if you look, oh, you can't really see it in the video, can you? The hangers are all, they're not freaking hanging straight. The, the, the bracket, the hanger bracket is like rubbing on the frame. You know, none of, none of the holders are in the right spot. Nothing's ever in the right freaking spot. So, and this, this one right here, I mean, look at it. You had to tighten it so fucking much that it smashed the hell out of everything. I mean, it's junk. It's just junk. It's, I mean, have the pipe will be fine, but eliminate the clamp that's in the way that hits the freaking firewall that rubs on the pinch weld up there. Eliminate it, weld it, and then if you ever need to take the downpipe off, you take the freaking band clamp off right here and the whole thing can come off. You know, that's that's my opinion. That's what I do. And, uh, you know, everybody knows that's how we do it. I don't, I mean, it is what it is. You know, if, uh, I mean, what I, I mean, granted, Don's already studded. So he should have been done. You know, the, the concept I would have is if you want aftermarket exhaust, do it last. Do it when everything else is done. Because working around the bigger downpipe when you're trying to do a cab on job, like driveway repair, like if this is, you know, I see it all the time. People get a, a, they get a truck, first thing they do is buy a freaking cold air intake and buy exhaust and buy a tuner right off the bat. No, I mean, God love everybody, you know, but dang. Let's, let's get that, that's like a, you know, you're, you, got, you got your foundation leaking water. Your basement's full of freaking water. But you want to buy new mini blinds. <laughs> really? You know? Let, let's, let's, uh, how about let's fix the foundation. Let's get everything right so that you got a solid freaking house. Then we can work on accessorizing it. You know, get what you got. Get your, get your baseline good. And buy your accessories. But, you know, not, I mean, most people, I mean, I'm the same way, you know, instant gratification. Hell, I want something, I want it, I want it now. I want to, I want to hear it, I want it to sound good, I want to turn it up, I want it to run good, but a lot of times that costs money. You know, it, it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm rambling on, but thought I would uh, just show, show a little bit. I mean, it's O3. Damn, I didn't turn the light on so you guys can't see squat over here. It's bright here. I mean, I got all kinds of light down on it, but uh, we will be doing our setup. His, the O3 intake is trash. It's gone. I don't use them. I don't put them back on. We don't use them at all. Uh, no more Y-pipe with the, with the heat shield on it. We don't do none of that no more. I put the late model heat shield on it. Uh, definitely won't be having no more ICP in the back. That look. Look, it's not, the, the little heat shield is not even covering. I just now noticed that. The heat shield isn't even pushed all the way on it. I mean, this was this was studded 5,000 miles ago from a, a, a shop here. But, I mean, I know, as big-headed as it sounds, I really don't care. They're not on our level. But people think they are because they've got billboards and, you know, they... They got advertising and stuff, but, I mean, whatever. If you screw everybody once, you still wind up a millionaire. <laughs> That's, screw that. But, oh well. I mean, we're all just trying to eat, so, uh, you know, let's just, uh, who knows. But, it's Don's truck. I'll probably make another video when I take it apart, because uh, we're he's really wanting to know what the failure is what happened i mean it's got zero compression on cylinder five so we'll see you know is it a valve uh, i think he paid like 300 dollars for head work which i don't know what the hell that did probably just surface it i don't know because uh working a set of heads is not 300 dollars. it's like 1200 dollars to properly work a set of heads and that's going to really suck if he dropped all that money and if he would have got a thorough 
job. I mean, we'll find out. We don't even know. We don't know what the failure is. I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. I'll make a video once I see it, once we get it disassembled and taken apart. We'll find out what the failure is. And, uh, you know, go from there. I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully these heads, I don't know, we'll find out if they can be reused. Who knows? Hopefully there's not a freaking cobbled up mess going on on them. Because it kind of looked like, I'm going to compare the castings back there. I haven't looked at them real close yet, but it looks like the casting that he's got back there are Chinese castings. But who knows? I don't know. We'll find out. But, all right, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll make more videos. I'll make another video on this later. And, uh, yeah, keep you updated. This is mainly for Don. I know other people watch him, but this is mainly... I mean, I, I like to think, and I'm kind of getting away from it because all these freaking people, you know, the internet mechanics come on and talking about take your, you know, talk, just, just talking smack. And so I wind up get sidetracked because uh, if you come to my shop and your truck is in my shop, then that's the only way to really believe. Because I have had customers come over and sit in the chair right there and watch or come over and and stand right here and and jump in and they they're my doors are open they can i mean a lot of our customers they like to they like this kind of stuff they like to see it they want to see what's going on my doors are open i love it when customers are here especially when things are going back together because i always point out i'm kind of though they're standing there and i'll be like hey watch this you look you see that you see that and then i'll get done put something on hey you see that you see that you know, and I like to, I like for them to see because we are not the cheapest shop in town. This is not discount auto repair. And uh, the only way to really know what you're paying for is to see it with your own eyes. You know, that's the best way to see it. And so uh, at times, you know, people have lives, they have to work, they have jobs, so they can't always be here. So that's a big reason why I make all these videos because. When Don gets to see this video, he looks at it, he can see that, hey, you know, I mean, uh, my truck's finally in, it's in, he's been working on it, he's got, he's, he's got his first little step done, frame's all painted, uh, underbody's all painted, everything's clean, uh, and, and he'll know, hey, tomorrow, it's on, I'm going to find out what happened to my engine tomorrow. You know, that's what the whole basis behind making these videos was for. Because, I mean, people ask me all the time, hey, why don't you monetize? Monetize. Why don't you monetize? You can make, make some money. YouTube will pay you. Well, I got a job, man. You know, I, I don't want to keep up with that. And plus, who the hell wants to watch a bunch of damn commercials? <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, but, yep, that's what this is all about. So, uh, you know, and all of my customers know that, you know, you go online, imagine, I mean, I don't give a damn. I'm laying it out so everybody can see what we do here. There is always somebody that can do it better, faster, cheaper, everything. There's always somebody out there better. Well, you know, I'm just doing the best I can. I mean, and I've seen what the best other people can do. I mean, look at it. It's right here. 6,000 miles later, 5,000 miles later. So... I mean, why isn't it at their shop getting fixed? That's the big question. You know, that's the big one. Like I had to do those head gaskets about a month ago from the milling, the, the milling job, why we bought our own equipment. 16 months ago, he was out of warranty. I covered it. I didn't make him pay. He didn't pay a freaking penny. I covered it. It was 16 months away of a, since the job had been done, and I covered it. Well, 16 months later, that customer, he spent a lot. We rebuilt the entire engine, but I had the machining done elsewhere. And 16 months later, you know what he did? He had an issue with coolant, and he brought it straight to me. Didn't He didn't think about, oh, well, I don't know about it. I don't know. I don't want to tell you. No, no. My customers, they, they know that I am not out to screw anybody. I'm not out to be the cheapest son of a gun. It costs what it costs. That's it. But 
when you when you I guess it's a deal of getting your money's worth, you know. And there was absolutely no reason for that truck to have head gasket issues. None at all. It was the machine mar, it was the milling. So I knew that. What difference does it make how much time went by? I don't freaking care. I'm going to cover that, you know. But, and that's where case by case, everyone's different. So, you know, but that's why I got all that equipment back there in third. Oh, back in the third bay. Oh, low battery. All right, guys. <laughs> I've been ranting like a son of a gun. Holy shit, quit. All right, have a good night, guys.